study many things in English, don't we? But do native speakers really use everything we learn? Do they use all the stuff we learn in language courses, in English schools? What do you think? Hey guys, Teacher Brix here to help you talk to anyone, anywhere, anytime in English. Don't forget to subscribe and click like, okay? Things that our native speakers don't use. You are probably learning a lot of stuff, a lot of grammar, a lot of vocabulary, a lot of things you can't do, you can't say. But the reality is different. The reality is that English can be very informal. If you've had the experience of traveling abroad, you notice that, how informal English can be. Think about your own language and all the grammar points you learned while you were in school. Do you use all of them? The same thing happens to native speakers. They speak English very well, the pronunciation is on point, they speak just like we speak our own native language. Many things we learn in school are not really used on everyday conversations. Now, a big observation here. I'm not saying these things are wrong, they are not. They are correct and if you use them, it's fine. And this is very important. Depending on where you are, on who you're talking to, you don't really need to use these things. And that's what I'm going to show today. Five things that you don't really need to use depending on a few situations I'm going to talk about. Number one, short answers like, yes, I do, no, I don't, yes, I did, no, I didn't. Hey, did you watch the game last night? Yes, I did. When you're learning tenses in English, you learn the possible short answers. And the teacher probably pushes you and makes you say it. I sometimes do that to my own students. No, no, Jim, give me the short answer at least. Not just yes or just no. But the truth is, when you're talking to a native speaker, you don't have to say yes, I do or no, I don't. It's informal, it's casual. The more casual the situation is, the more casual your English is going to be. In a, in a classroom, when you are practicing, Sometimes the teacher uh, requires you to give a short answer because if you don't give a short answer, you will, you will spend the entire class saying yes or no. You don't have vocabulary yet. What happens in real life is you say yes, but then you continue talking. Uh, did you watch the game last night? In a casual conversation, I would say, yeah, it was great. I continue. I don't need to say, yes, I did. It was great. It's not a problem. It's not a big deal. If you stop at the yes and continue talking about the soccer game in this case to a native speaker. As I said, they are not incorrect. You just have to, to measure the situation and see if it's really necessary to say, yeah, yeah, I do. So relax, it's okay to say yes or to say no, but continue talking. Number two, o'clock. You know when you're giving the time and it's the exact hour, so you want to say, hey, it's three o'clock. You don't need to say the o'clock all the time. Now, I'm not saying it's unusual, they use o'clock. However, it's not used all the time, especially in casual conversations. You're talking to your friend, yeah, you're, you're arranging to hang out or to meet up. Hey, let's meet at 10. That's enough. You don't need to say the o'clock. It's a casual conversation with your friend, with your native friend. Another thing, you can say around 10. 10-ish. Uh, that means uh, it's 10 plus something. 10, 10, 10, 12, 10, 20. So you don't need to say o'clock all the time. Now, is it wrong? No, not wrong. People do use it. Native speakers use it, not as frequently as we do when we are learning the language. Number three, and I practice my English with you. If you travel abroad or if you meet a native speaker, you don't need to say, to ask, can I practice my English with you? That is not really common. You can just say, hey, can I talk to you? Is it okay if I talk to you for a little bit? These are more popular ways and more common ways to ask to talk to someone because at the end of the day, that's what you're gonna do. You're gonna talk, but in English, he's not gonna practice anything. He's just gonna talk to you. I know you are going to be practicing and don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with this question. And if you want the person to correct you because sometimes that's your, that's your idea, that is something that you should ask. Hey, would you, would you be okay correcting me if I make any mistake? Or um, uh, would, you, would you mind correcting me or giving me some suggestions, giving me some tips? You practice your English with your teacher in the classroom. Number four, mother and father they are your parents. They are the people who love you most of the time they love you I hope they love you seriously 
I do. The thing is, non-native speakers have a tendency to say mother and father all the time. If you've had the experience of talking to a native speaker, they talk about their parents as mom and dad. There's nothing wrong with the words, and I sometimes say mother and father. When you're talking about your, your mom and your, and your dad, if you say mother and father, it sounds too formal. It sounds more like you don't like them. Uh, native speakers, the, they will say mom and dad. Okay, it's very common for them to say so. Nothing wrong with father, nothing wrong with mother. And the last one, I must do exercises in English. You know you learned must and there are situations when you need the word must. When you're just saying that you, you have an obligation. Uh, most native speakers use have to. I have to work. I must work. I have to respect the law. Not I must respect the law. It's too strong. So they usually use have to. As I said, there are situations when you will see examples of must being used in spoken language. Now, I don't need to say I must. I just need to say I have to. You don't need to say must. I must go. I have to go. Same thing for the negative. Oh my God, especially for negative. If you use mustn't, it's like so, so not used. You mustn't go. No, forget that. You don't have to go. You don't have to do this. No mustn't, no must. Now, they are not wrong. But as I said, native speakers will opt for have to. There you go, five things that are correct, but native speakers don't usually use so much or depending on the situation, if it's a more casual situation, native speakers will not really use. The purpose of this video here is to make your English a little bit more casual, but there's nothing wrong with these words. They will understand you, they will be okay if you say them. No, no, no problems at all. So what do you think of this video? Let me know in the comments, okay? Don't forget to subscribe and help me reach 10k subscribers and like this video, alright? Thank you guys and I'll see you next time!